level operation. Mm -hmm. The number nine is very important to the Illuminati, and most of their underground facilities have nine levels of one sort or another. And the very first couple of levels were designed as holding areas. Here's where many of the cages were, were found, um, where they actually put uh, the children in and held them until such time as they were needed. Mm -hmm. They also would keep um, uh, soldiers or, or um, equipment in these upper levels just for storage purposes. It was generally a staging area. Then there are levels three, four, and five were generally used for the experimentation and genetic manipulation. Here's where scientific medical uh, programs were developed, where they would inject people with certain type of material, or they would put implants in them or hook them up to certain type of uh, devices uh, just to see the results or see how a person would react to that. And it was in these levels also where the age of the person was important because depending on the age, they use children to create fear and anxiety for the mind control. They use the teenagers and younger adults for the genetic experimentation. And it was also in these levels, I think it was level seven, where the deep programming for the sleepers were um, was given. Now, sleepers being people who were being programmed for a future time when a certain trigger would be provided and then their function would be opened up, whether that would be as an assassin or as um, a political person, whatever the function happened to be, mm -hmm. they would be programmed at that level. It was at the very deeper level, mm -hmm. especially level eight, that they had the, the time travel, the vortex opened up uh, to many other places. It was kept at a very deep level because in case there was a bombardment from the surface, that would be untouched. It was also at the deeper levels that the tubes leading out into the ocean and into other parts of the continent were available. And that's how they would also bring people in from underground areas. Was there a gigantic subway? Yeah. In fact, the whole Earth is crisscrossed with this tube system, mm -hmm. uh, which is very fast. It's faster than a plane. Mm -hmm. And it, can, it travels basically all over the Earth. Now, originally, they told us they didn't know who built it that had been there since day zero. Huh. But I know it was built by the Lemurians. It's that old? Oh, it's at least 300,000 years old. Because Al says that when he actually worked in um, California, mm -hmm. to get to Montauk, he would go on the subway. Yeah. And that's how he got there, and it just took a very short period of time. Yeah, I... Very short. In fact, um, you see, they also built their own tubes with the technology they found. And the, and the technology was very interesting because it never produced debris. It would just simply build a tunnel, and the debris would be incorporated into the walls of the tunnel, mm -hmm. which glowed a green color. It was always self-illuminated. Hmm. So they never needed electrical equipment or anything down there because it was just self-illuminating. Now, that I, I know was alien technology, but it had been here so long that they just incorporated it into their own. There was one time, I, re, I was told back in 1961, I believe, there was a spacecraft that came down in the Mojave Desert. And this craft came from the Tau Ceti star system. And the, the being who they found on board, it was quite human-like, uh, was taken... Uh, through the tube system to an, an Air Force base in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. And he went in 1961 from the L.A. area all the way to North Dakota in less than two hours in this tube system. Mm. And, um, and, of course, when he got there, they, they did execute him, but they did interrogate him first. They interrogated, then executed him. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> now, physically inside... Montauk, what did it look like? Depending on where you were, because you have to remember it was built over a 200-year period. Mm -hmm. did, did the Army Corps of Engineers have anything to do with it? Oh, yeah, they did. In fact, they're there at this very moment. So you're saying that the base is operational today? I was there in June, and the Army Corps of Engineers was there tearing down buildings and covering up openings, and uh, it was a very precarious situation being there. 
<laughs> but we did sneak on to the base and um, manage to see what was going on. Wow. So they are in the process of doing something there right, right now. Mm -hmm. Do you think you still have any connection to this Montauk project? I'm sure that I will for the rest of my life. There's programming in me, even now, that I'm sure isn't opened yet. Yes. Uh, so the project continues, doesn't it? Not in the same way. Okay. Because you said, I, didn't, didn't you say you're there till 83? Yes. Okay, now 83 is such a significant date. Yeah. Um, t August 12th. Yeah. Uh, without me giving you any leeway on this. And, and well, I'll tell you what happened. T well, tell us what happened from your perspective. I'll tell you what I know. Okay. In 1983, August 12th, now, there was a psychic that was used predominantly to help open these vortices and other uh, software that was downloaded by computer. Was that and he Duncan? he would sit on this chair, which was hooked up to his brain, mm -hmm. and whatever he thought, the computer would generate and download. Mm -hmm. Now, someone was supposed to be monitoring him, but I guess after all those years, they started getting too lazy or familiar with the process, and he was left alone on the chair, and he fell asleep and had a nightmare. Hmm. And in the nightmare, he generated this monster energetically that the computer then created physically. And this creature, which they call Junior, mm -hmm. started tearing up the base and creating havoc. Mm -hmm. And they could not turn it off because it kind of had a life of its own. Mm -hmm. and the only way to stop it was to destroy the equipment. So in that one night, after all those years... They just destroyed everything it's just to shut down this uh, creature from continuing its havoc. Mm -hmm. Now, the embodiment or energy of that creature is still in the energy field at Montauk. In fact, even in recent years, people who have taken pictures of the area have seen or photographed the outline of it. Yes. I believe Preston has a photo like that that he could show people. Yes, and Al does too, and we put a couple of those pictures on this CD. Yeah. And so, uh, when that happened, those of us who were left kind of were like unplugged from a central computer. And I know personally, for the first time in my life, I, I felt like I didn't know who I was or what I was supposed to do. Wow. I was literally like uh, a Borg that was disconnected from the collective. Now, now, Stuart, you talk of this event as if it was just a mistake, that I, I believe this was Duncan that you're talking about. Yes. Who was on the chair. Right. That he fell asleep and had a nightmare. I have heard other stories where this was really a planned event. Well, you know what? I'm open to all of that because the Illuminati have so many scenarios and, and phases that I wouldn't put anything past them. Huh. So it's very possible it was a staged event. However, from my perspective and what I knew it was a it was an accident well it was um as described to me there was an intention to destroy the base and this was the plan very possible that somehow a, a nightmare situation was transmitted to duncan while mm -hmm. he was on the chair yeah that's a possibility okay i well, would i would not doubt that uh, now were you actually at the base when this happened no i was actually at my home in another part of long island mm -hmm. and when it happened I had a nervous breakdown. Hmm. I just went berserk. I became an alcoholic. I could not function in my in my marriage. I was just insane. Hmm. And that led to a very long period of time where I was just really let loose in the world and was quite wild until finally um, I was sent to deprogrammers who unfortunately did work for the government but did download a lot of information for me and help me to, to get myself uh, at least balanced in some way. However, during that time, I was placed on Prozac, hydrochlorazide, all kinds of medications designed to, to make me unaware of who and what I was. And every time I complained about it, they doubled the dosage until I became suicidal. Hmm. And then I... I was eventually sent away by the government into a prison camp wow. in the Appalachian Mountains. What year was this? It was 1992. Not that long ago. Eight years ago. Yeah. Oh, well, eight and a half now. How long were you there? I was in that particular prison camp for about, I guess, seven months. 